Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're just north of the little village of Fritham. It's located a few miles west of Cadnam in the north of the New Forest. And we're going to be following the entire length of the Dockens Water, a stream that flows from Fritham westwards through the New Forest. It's about six miles long and flows eventually into the River Avon, just north of Ringwood. So uh, it's going to be a linear walk, so therefore I've been dropped off at Fritham and hopefully six miles that way I'll be picked up at the other end. Now during the course of the walk, I'm going to be accompanied by this wonderful book, Walking in the New Forest, by Joan Begbie. It was published in 1934 when Joan was 36. She lived in the area, I think she died in 1984. But her book describes numerous walks she did in the New Forest with her two dogs, Bill, a bull terrier, and Mr Bundy, a rough-haired griffin. And the prose is wonderful. I mean, her descriptions of what she sees and experiences are quite a delight. And if it's okay with you, I might read a few extracts as we go along. Now I'm filming uh, at the end of May. It looks like it's going to be a glorious day. Quite a bit of wind about, so hopefully the audio is not going to be too badly affected. Uh, the few clouds, but the sun is there. It should burn off. Should be perfect conditions for a walk. So do come along with us. Well, the first thing to do is to find the source of the Dockens water which is just to the north of Fritham. I'm actually located uh, at the edge of uh, Long Cross Plain. It's one of the highest points in the New Forest. In fact, I think the highest point of the actual New Forest is Piper's Wait, which is about half a mile to the north of here at about 140 metres above sea level. So the source, well, it's sort of behind me here. Well, of course, this time of year, the higher reaches of the stream will be quite dry but basically the source sort of it starts in that direction you can see the the root of where it would be once there's water here and it's a little bit muddy along the gully there so let's uh, just follow the route uh, southwards <laughs> Well, we've only been going about 400 yards or so and we've uh, come across a little bit of a challenge. If you look at the Ordnance Survey map of Fritham, you'll see there's a purple boundary marked around it. I think that means that it sits outside of the New Forest perambulation, i.e. not common land and is private. So I think that's right. And the problem here is the stream and it is beginning to look like a stream, sort of carries on heading south but uh, say through that that private land so we're going to have to circumnavigate for them to pick up the stream on the other side having said that there is a, a little road that goes through the center of Fritham we might be able to catch a glimpse of the stream there so let's go and have a look well just as we make our way around Fritham just on the northern end is this magnificent building Fritham Lodge which uh, dates to 1671 and may in fact have been one of Charles II's hunting lodges. Well, I just had to stop and show you this, folks. <laughs> A quite stunning meadow full of buttercups, looking quite glorious in the sunshine this morning. <laughs> well, there's a tree that almost gave up growing and then had to think about it and uh, carried on. <laughs> Lovely shape. We're well, just making our way through the village. It really is quite pretty, full of uh, some delightful properties. It uh, gets its name from Old English cultivated plot, or the ham bit, and scrub on the edge of a forest, which is the frith bit. Oh. <laughs> that poor bear down there looks a bit unloved. Oh. 
there we go. Right, um, now I reckon if I've got my map directions right, we should be able to get a sighting of the, the Dockens water as it just passes underneath the road here. Yes, there it is. And there's well, a fair bit of water in it already. So, so the streams come from the north and the source was well, the other side of those trees where we started through this private land. It'll go underneath the road uh, and then continuing head southwards. So what we'll do is we'll carry on to the edge of the village sort of west and then turn south and pick up the stream on the other side of the village. Ah, the Royal Oak. It's uh, one of the oldest pubs in the New Forest. I think it dates back to the 17th century and certainly in a survey conducted uh, amongst myself it's one of the best pubs in Hampshire. Right, we're right on the edge of the village now. We actually have done a walk here in the past so if you haven't seen that video do check that one out. But we just now need to follow this little uh, road round and uh, continue and head southwards. Okay, well this is where we get to meet up with the Dockens water again. So it's come through Fritham, through that hedge there. And uh, well, as you can see, it's already quite a, a flowing stream, but you can see just from the depth of the banks there, how uh, this can become quite a raging torrent, uh, certainly during the winter. But from now on, for the next five miles or so, we should be able to follow it unhindered. Fingers crossed. This really is a quite beautiful setting. Uh, in front of me over there is the Queen North Wood and just panning round. Well, to my left is the North Bentley enclosure which was created way back in the 1700s uh, to provide wood for ships although it was largely converted to conifers in the 1930s and then just a little bit further on is South Bentley enclosure also planted around about the 1700s with oak and it's thought to be one of the oldest surviving plantations in the New Forest although about a third of the oaks were replaced by conifers in the 1960s. Right, already an opportunity for a little dip, the cool down, we're going to get plenty of uh, other opportunities later on but I know it's not deep but it's going to cool your pores down anyway and uh, a chance perhaps uh, a little drink of water as well. well. I'll tell you it's so atmospheric in here all I can hear are birds tweeting. Logan's on squirrel alert and I say within these woods you've got this lovely dappled effect the sun streaming through the foliage from above and a little bit of reflection on the water. It really is a little bit of paradise in here. Well here we are, the Dockens water is to my right just uh, beyond those trees here but on the, the left here you can make out the old boundary bank or the enclosure banks. So we've got the South Bentley enclosure on the left and uh, when the enclosure was originally made the bank would have been built there would have been a wooden sort of fence along the top and a ditch on the right hand side and uh, after about 30 years or so the fencing which was there to keep stock out would have been removed. this winding 
nature of uh, the root, very typical of a new forest stream, very rarely going in a dead straight line, this uh, high up in its course. Gosh, look at those quite gorgeous little white flowers growing in the water there. I thought they were daisies at first with yellow centres, but their white petals are just much, much bigger than a, a daisy. Look beautiful in the sunshine. So just getting our bearings as the Dockens water meanders its way, almost at the bottom of a valley. And in the far distance, that's the start of Free Worms Hill, which means on the left must be Anse's Wood. We're well, seeing as we're on the edge of Anse's Wood, I thought I'd uh, read a little section from Joan's book. I'm going to have to use my uh, glasses for that. Anse's is old and gobliny and beautiful too. Crab apples, hollies, oaks and beeches grow together in rough confusion, but perfect good fellowship on the slope between South Bentley and Holly Hatch. The oaks are all fine old trees, their bark gracefully diapered, their shape true to the best oak tradition. Of the beeches this cannot always be said. Some heel over at perilous angles, others split into branches almost as soon as they stop being roots, and others, fallen, prop themselves on some great limb and continue to bear leaf and mast as if nothing had happened. They suffer, too, from a curious infirmity of purpose with regard to their branches, a malady most incident to beeches and called ingrowth. Thus a tree may grow to normal length of stem and start to branch like its neighbour, but after the limbs are three to four feet long they will reunite, become completely fused, and then, after another foot or so, will break away and behave perfectly naturally for the rest of their lives. It appears impossible, too, for one branch to touch another without becoming locked in an inseparable, if brief, embrace. I say her prose is fantastic. Well, our first sighting of fish, albeit very, very tiny ones. I don't know if you can see them darting around. I don't know if they are fish or stickleback. Can't, can't see. But uh, there's certainly loads of them, whatever they are, darting about. Uh, a little bridge over the Dockens water. So, well, directly ahead of me, that's Rakes Breaks Bottom. <laughs> and then just to the left is the outskirts of Holly Hatch Enclosure. And so, we're continuing to head a sort of south westerly direction. Oh, lovely to see the bluebells still hanging on in there, managing to retain their colour. They've probably still got a couple more weeks or so left before we say goodbye to them for the year. Oh, another little pit stop to admire the view. This is looking to the north, so up here is the uh, outskirts of the Slodden or Slowden enclosure. I'm never sure how you pronounce that actually. And then Ragged Boys Hill and then in the very very far distance is the Hasley enclosure. And we have done a walk in there in the past. Oh, isn't that quite enchanting? Holly Hatch Cottage, an old New Forest Keeper's cottage. I get some great views from here, and this is, it shows the variety 
you get of landscape on the New Forest. I mean, okay, on the right there's the Slodden enclosure with all its trees, but then you get so much vast open heathland as well, which uh, makes it so interesting. And this, folks, is uh, probably one of the most photographed bridges in the New Forest, Splash Bridge. And at this stage, Dockland's Water now is beginning to become quite substantial. It was a lovely, sweet little bridge. Indeed, uh, Hayward Sumner, the uh, well-known New Forest painter, drawer, writer, archaeologist from the last century, he um, drew or painted a picture of uh, Splash Bridge many years ago. And then this is the, the track that eventually heads up to uh, the Hasley enclosure, which is behind those trees. But it really is quite a, a delightful spot. Just here on my left is the Broomy enclosure. Let me read a little section again from Joan's book. Broomy enclosure. It's a bewitching wood and was in the pleasantest mood that day. Brightly painted, tiny flowers were generously sprinkled about the short grass of the ride. The oaks, tall and freely spaced, made the sun a welcome guest their leaves tactfully preventing him from becoming too much for their other friends. And he, in return, made brilliant designs all over their green carpet. Well, we're making very good progress. We're at a place now called Woodford Bottom. Little wooden bridge behind me and over on the other side is Ogden's Purlieu. Now, normally I would stop here and do a little detour to the south to visit the High Corner Inn for some light refreshment but unfortunately it's currently a close for refurbishment and its reopening day is tomorrow <laughs> it's a bit of bad timing there well, i think this is our first sighting of some new forest ponies on the walk a few of them are a bit flighty these mares the stallions have uh, just been on the forest for a couple of weeks now there's about 20 stallions across the whole forest each one's given a separate area and they're usually out for about six weeks or so so uh, this might have uh, something to do with the reason they're a little bit flighty or they seem to have settled down now picking some grass well just a little update on the route um, things have become a little bit complicated since we left that wooden bridge if you look at an ordnance survey map the New Forest Boundary does some weird things and uh, there were some houses and fields so we had to come away from the stream for a bit. I'm continuing to head westwards um, and there is a sort of some fencing here. The stream is about 50 yards or so to the north so we'll see how we get on. We'll continue going westwards. Hopefully we'll be able to pick it up again shortly. Oh wow isn't this uh, beautiful? This is looking to the, to the south. That's a Linwood over in that direction. There's a, an authorised cycle route that uh, goes across there. So I reckon if we carry on here a little bit, we should be able to pick up the Dockens water very shortly on our right. Aha! Here we go. Here's our old friend again. A little footbridge. And uh, picking it up, meandering its way. I was worried, I thought you had lost you. <laughs>
well after a small detour again <laughs> having to uh, circumnavigate some private land we're back on track reacquainted with the Dockens water in fact we're right on the border of the uh, the old new forest beautiful part of the stream here there's almost a, a bronzy brown tinge to the bottom there perhaps there's a bit of iron content around I don't know so it looks as though we're now going to be on the sort of northern bank of the stream for a little bit so on the northern side of the stream this is uh, Great Bottom, Digden Bottom and then along to the left here is Linwood Bog and uh, Joan described it as uh, well I quote the bog lies spread at the foot of the common like a huge golden brown bear skin rug. Oh, I've just spotted far distance up on the ridge there a little herd of deer I think they're fallow deer I'll um, get my camera out and put the zoom lens on and see if I can get a decent picture it might be a bit hazy. Right so I've got two alternative plans here um, can't go through uh, the bog um, tried it uh, we could either head north up this ridge and then come back down again or we can head back south and pick up a road and then pick up the stream again I think that's probably what I'm gonna do so we're gonna temporarily say goodbye to the stream but we'll be seeing it again shortly. Well folks, every cloud has got a silver lining. Because we've had to do the unplanned detour, means we've got to pass the red chute in. So we'll better pop inside, just for research purposes for the video. Well, just what the doctor ordered. Yep, that gets a thumbs up from me. Well, I must say I'm somewhat fortified by that pint of ale it's uh, put a spring in my step so we're sort of following this road and very shortly hopefully we'll come across a footpath that'll take us north and we can rejoin our friend the Dockens water one more time well a little pit stop <laughs> as per usual so this is looking to the south and up on the ridge there that's the uh, Whitefield plantation that bunch of trees and then just slowly panning around the direction we're heading and then to the left of here is um, Rockford Common and Logan and I have done a walk in there in the past if you haven't seen that video do check that one out haha -ha. that's what I was looking for a footpath sign so fingers crossed somewhere down here we should be able to pick up the stream again Oh yes, here we are. <laughs> it's lovely to meet up with you again. Oh, I feel quite a, an affiliation with this uh, stream now. Right, so if we start heading left, fingers crossed, this will take us back to Moyles Court and it won't be too boggy. But uh, uh, it's quite a a reasonably wide stream now and quite free flowing as well. Oh, this is a lovely stretch of the stream here. We're in the Newlands Plantation and uh, oh, it's, it's very hard to put uh, into words. I tell you, it's uh, peaceful along here and uh, quite a few reeds poking through there and hopefully Logan can have a dog dip in a minute <laughs> here he goes oh now that does look lovely and cooling I would join you but I just don't want to get my feet wet I think you're quite happy just to stand there and cool down oh what a beautiful setting 
<laughs> I think you could stay there for a while, couldn't you, fella? He says, where are those pesky squirrels gone? favourite oak tree in the whole of the New Forest, the Moyles Court Oak. It's not as big as uh, the Nightwood Oak but a lot of uh, experts reckon it might be older just because it doesn't, uh, well it hasn't been growing so fast. But I really do love it. And just continuing to read from Joan's book, she says, the finest oak in the district grows just above the stream on a green rise and across the Linwood Road mounts Three Tree Hill with its group of rugged pines, its purple heather and its great creamy sandpit. Over the water stands Moyles Court itself, a sober red house backed by woods and neighboured by barns and stables. Well just behind me uh, at Moyles Court is Rockford Sandpit, which is Logan's favourite part of the whole of the New Forest. And I can't believe it. I mean, quarter to three on a Friday before a bank holiday. And we've got it to ourselves. Time for a few Whippet Zoomies, but not too many because it is quite hot. Well, I'll let you into a, a little secret. We came across a little bit more bog, so we had to uh, leave the, the stream again, found a little pony track, went back up onto the road. So here we are at Moyles Court, where there's a ford, and we can once again make our acquaintances with the Dockland's water. Well, while Logan has a little cooling down after all those whippet zoomies, this is where the Dockland's water sort of comes off the new forest and passes by Moyles Court School. Well we're very much on the final leg now. We've actually come out of the New Forest National Park past Moyles Court School and the Dockens stream is just behind me here. We're just going to follow a little footpath to the edge of a lake and that's probably going to be about as far as we're going to go but I'll explain when we get there. Well, we're pretty much come to the end of our journey now. If you look on an 1898 map, the stream sort of heads south and then joins the River Avon and eventually makes its way out to sea at Christchurch. But since that map was produced, there have been a lot of gravel extraction and a lot of lakes here now. Um, so basically, you've got a, there is a nature reserve, but a lot of it uh, is uh, private land. The stream does go underneath the main Ringwood to Fording Bridge Road so I suppose you could stand on a bridge and see the stream and I think there's one more public footpath that the stream goes under but for all intents and purposes this is probably where we should end the walk but not quite because there's a pub 800 yards away and this is the Alice Lyle pub it's an 18th century building that was a village school that converted into a pub in the 1960s now uh, Alice Lyle herself lived at the manor house just down the road which is now Moyles Court School. She was beheaded in 1685 for harbouring fugitives at the Battle of Sedgemoor at her, her Moyles Court home in Rockford. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today, quite an exploration, but we got there in the end. So until we meet again, from myself, from Logan and from Joan, 
Thanks for watching and cheerio. Oh, lovely. Now, can I tempt you in a crisp? You deserve it. Well done, lad. <laughs>